so many people after dad passed had come to me and told and shared how, um, and we talked about this, Marquez, how Ayoku Babu came and told, you know, no, oh, Dina was saying that, um, he, and he's the executive director and founder of the Pan-African Film Festival and Arts Festival. He said, hey, I would never have done this if it had not been for your father. And he talked to me about it. We talk about June Moon, who is the digital media aggregator of content for Apple, Amazon Music, Spotify, and Google. The first black man to ever do that told me the same thing. So, you know, and that's why to me, and we've, we've just discussed this, the music is amazing. The company is amazing, but the legacy is so much bigger than just the music. I mean, and, and I'm not saying this just because he was my dad and my mom will tell you when I was a little girl, Half the time, I didn't want to be associated with my family. I was in the streets on my horse trying to be, I can't stand my life. Let me get out of this big mansion on a lake and all this stuff and go live in a hovel somewhere. <laughs> I was the worst. But the thing is, for us as a people, and you look at revolutionary, what we're going through right now, when dad started and when he came up, we were in a revolution, a racial revolution then, maybe 60s. 70s, look at all that's going on now. 2020, look at what we are now facing. Now my children are having to experience pretty much the same thing that was going on now. So basically it's another revolution. So if we don't know our history, we're damned to repeat it. And that is why to me, not just about the music, it is so important that men like my dad, who just, I mean, gave his life, he sacrificed so much, I don't care about you know, with, um, you know, the activities or this, you know, well, he didn't do this in a contract, he sacrificed and he gave his life for this industry and for our people. It wasn't just about the music. You talk about Doug McHenry, first black filmmaker. You talk about um, Peter Allen, uh, uh, writer on Takers. I mean, he gave some, Carolyn Ali. There's so many firsts, so many people. Dick Barnett is a college roommate. You know, I mean, it's, didn't they own guys and dolls together? Yes, they, they own guys and dolls together, and and again, and to what you're saying, Carolyn, and he, you know, he he really was a Renaissance man. One one thing about Dick, uh, the people, the executives that came on board, he had a, he had he didn't just have a talent for uh, because he Dick was a musician, you know, he was a drummer, and he listened to jazz and Miles Davis, and uh, he was, I mean, he was a lot a lot of companies hired executives. And they sort of look at the charts and see what was here or there. Dick really was a musician, and um, and he also was a good singer. I mean, I, we actually did a little song together. Um, but uh, he reckoned, he just you know you know how some people come along. They're not. I don't believe anybody's more special than anyone. I think everyone has their gifts. But for whatever reason, God just blessed him with a multi with this multi mantle. You know, he, 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 he could spot someone, he knew smart people, you know, he knew smart people. They might not have the experience, uh, but, but if they could take direction, then he, they could, they could uh, you know, run with that. Of course, he had very professionals around him. Gosh, Virgil Roberts, who was one of the leading, uh, uh, you know, attorneys in this business. Of course, nobody gave Virgil his talent. Nobody gave Virgil his education. A brilliant man, but when but uh, uh, but when Dick met him, um, Virgil had sort of was uh, I think through Walter. He met Virgil through Walter. He was in a small office, I think, uh, somewhere close to what is now Century City. I think that's where it was. But we went in a little tiny office, and it was uh, Walter had told Dick about this incredible attorney, uh, you know, a Harvard attorney, and um, and we I went that we went that it was it was Dick, Richard, and me, and Walter and Virgil. And uh, gosh, I like Virgil right away. You know, he's such a brilliant, brilliant man, but but just really down to earth, down to earth and nice. And um, so, uh, and of course, you know, it, it's the <laughs> it, the history after uh, everyone knows about Virgil Roberts. But these are people that he, you know, that he was sort of the 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 glue to the network of a lot of talent. Ray Harris, uh, you know, just an, another incredible. Uh, Vice President, uh, uh, and, um, like you said, and, and rest in peace, beautiful, beautiful Carolina Lee, and so many people in the Collison. See, and he was ahead of his time. You know, people want to call sometimes, you know, he was a 
big old strong guy, but he wasn't a chauvinist. I mean, he, you know, he liked, he, he knew about pretty women. But he, if you were smart and you knew what, you know, you, you knew, you had a lot of knowledge, he would give you an opportunity. Dina Andrews, I mean, I, gosh, we started listening, we been listening how long of people that maybe didn't have a track. Margaret, beautiful Margaret Nash, he, he opened so many doors. That's what he did. He opened so many doors. He gave people an opportunity, but they had the talent. You know, I mean, the right, Leon Silvers, I mean, they had the talent. He never, you know, he, he never uh, 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 underplayed what anybody did, but it was in so many different areas. Uh, just any, uh, when he met Jesse Jackson, he was a part of uh, uh, um, managing Jesse Jackson when he ran for presidency. I gosh, that was another experience in so many different areas. So he did. He just opened so many doors, and he did have a legacy. And he was so busy. Mark was. He really was a behind the scenes guy. You know, there's nothing wrong with being out front. You know, but that just wasn't his personality. He was so busy doing. You know, so many different projects, and he was about the ground level and sort of overseeing everything. But you know, I, sometimes he would tell me later on, as as we became you know more successful, he said, "People," he said, "If I didn't live this life, he said I wouldn't believe it." I mean, all the people that he met and the things that he did, and, uh, you know, with the music industry and the whole other issue of being of being in Africa and different things that he did. And, uh, so he did open so many doors, but in so many different genres. And